Who is the best team in Texas? Today I'm holding a statewide battle royale in NCAA football and the rules of college football imperialism are simple. The first thing I'll do is spin a wheel to pick a team and after that I have to figure out which direction they'll be attacking. For example, if I landed on TCU and the arrow pointed south, they'd have to play Texas and if they win, they'll get to steal their land, but this time you can only gain territory when you're the attacking team. Anyways, we're jumping right into it and the first team going to battle will be Rice and let's see what what direction they're going to be going and it looks like they're going to be going in the northeast and from their logo that is pointing directly towards Houston they're starting out with a tough road game and remember only the defending team which is Houston because they're at home can lose their land it looks like they've fumbled it here but they still ended up pounding rice I mean this one wasn't even close and since rice attacked and they lost nothing happens here I think adding that in is going to make this a lot more interesting it looks like Texas Tech has a chance to claim land and they could pretty much attack all over the state they a pretty good starting spot. That's a terrible draw. I mean, that arrow is pointing like this, so technically the next closest school is UTEP, but we want to see upsets, and I think the Miners are going to get put out here. With about five minutes left in this one, UTEP is down by 13, and it's unfortunate they couldn't pull this one off because they're the first team to get taken off the map. Unfortunately for them, they did not make it past this very beginning point. We knew that they were probably going to get eliminated, but now when you look at Texas, the Red Raiders have about a third of it, and they could very well be the winners of this thing it looks like Rice has to play again, and I'm sure they're hoping they're going any direction but Houston. They are going to the other side, and this one is very close, but I'd say it was pointing more towards Texas State here. So once again, another small school could be getting put out early. And let me tell you all something. I thought I was watching the worst game of football ever. Neither of these teams had touched the end zone until the very end of the first half right here, and Texas State was fighting just to stay in the tournament. They had to win today, and they were honestly playing pretty well. But with four minutes left, in the game rice had to pick up a first down here and they turned it into a touchdown to make it a one possession game and now texas state needed a first down and they can't get it here we go the clock is winding down under two minutes now rice needs to move down the field quarterback breaks off the tackle gets eight yards and they're not going for the tie they're going for the win can they get a touchdown quarterback tries to escape the pocket he fumbles the ball texas state is gonna stay alive and that one defensive stop is going to save them the game with that result the bobcats get to keep their land and let me know what you all think about me adding that rule because it wasn't in the last one but let's see where north texas is going to be going they're going to be going to the southeast and with the way i set the map up that means they have to play against tcu i think we're gonna have another game where nobody gains anything and i was correct this one isn't even close tcu up by 18 now they've scored again. Hopefully this time the attacking team will actually win their game. It looks like it's going to be UTSA and this could be big. There's a lot of small schools they could take on. I think it's fair to say that is going to be UTSA versus Rice. The arrow points right to that little corner and if there are actually Rice fans that exist, just know your team had their chance. They lost multiple attacks but it looks like they're going to go for the lead here and they're going to get it. So maybe they can defend Homeland. There's three minutes left now and the Roadrunners are going for the win. They need a touchdown. That's going to be a first down and they're looking to eliminate rice completely as they score all right it is time for a money drive a minute and a half left they do get the first down they're not out of it but they are in hurry up mode and they should be because they need to be very careful about this clock third and three they're still out of field goal range they actually went with the run and they got stopped short so it all comes down to this they're going with the pass and he's wide open they are probably in field goal range too maybe not ohio state's kicker couldn't hit from closer than this so this is college so I'm wrong about that, but that at least puts them in field goal range for sure. And I'm thinking this could go to overtime, but they might go for the win. I don't know what this defense is from UTSA. But now with eight seconds left, they could still hold them here. Is he going to get in? He is held just short. That is going to send this one into overtime. And they probably should have gone for it there since they got stuck kicking three, which means all UTSA needs to do is score a touchdown to eliminate them from the tournament. And they're very lucky that their defense got the job done. However, in double overtime, they did give up a touchdown. So Rice has to score and they throw an interception. What is he thinking? That one throw is going to eliminate his team from the tournament. Their exit is their own fault. They should have won at least one of the three games they played in, but they never got a win and slowly but surely someone's taken over Texas. I have no idea who it's going to be but it could be anyone and TCU is playing next. They're looking to redeem themselves after getting embarrassed by Georgia in the championship and from the direction of the arrow they're going to be traveling to Baylor so this one should be good. Approaching halftime Baylor hadn't scored yet and TCU 
look like they were about to go up by 17, but they would have to get in and Max Duggan threw a laser. I honestly thought Baylor would play better since they are going to be getting eliminated if they lose and they're in a tough position. They're already down nine and after this throw, they're going to be down by 15 and this would make it a three possession game. TCU could just end it here. Max Duggan throws an interception, not over yet. However, if they can't pick this up, it will be. The running back bounces to the outside. That's a first down, and the Bears have to move fast. They have all three timeouts, so it really isn't over. They just haven't been able to score much today, and they really need to. Well, fourth and 10. This should be it, unless they pick it up. And what is the TCU cornerback doing? He just sold right there. I'm not sure why he did that but it's going to be over anyway as TCU knocks Baylor out and takes over a large part of Central Texas. This is all their land now, getting rid of the Bears logo, and I hope you all enjoy watching these as much as I enjoy making them. All right, Texas A&M is playing next, and I'm not sure how they're going to do in this tournament. They didn't have a good season in real life, but with their first game being against Texas State, I think they're going to be okay. I'm always going to support the underdogs, and the fact that Texas State is still in this game in the third quarter is huge. I'm not sure why they're going five wide here on the goal line. It's Pete Carroll mode, but they did run it, but I think their defense is going to sell them the game anyway. They need to stop here, and you know what? Only being down by three isn't bad at all. This could have very easily been a blowout. I'm just proud of them for sticking in it they need to get a first down here though what a broken tackle i mean it's not over yet i don't know why they went with the run here on third down it did get a few yards but settling for three from this far out is dangerous is the kick good it is all right you know what i'm not going to question the coaching decisions here they seem to be competing very well with texas a&m get the stop they're getting the ball back i mean their odds aren't great but all they have to do is get into field goal range all right time is winding down here it's going to be third and six i would recommend they just drain this clock take it to overtime and that's what they're deciding to do i gotta say Texas State's head coach is running circles around Jimbo Fisher. And now we get overtime. Texas State trying not to get eliminated. They're going to be out of bounds short, which means they're stuck settling for three. That is not good. And I'm not going to lie, guys. I think they're in a lot of trouble. This one could end the game. He isn't even going to get the first down. So it isn't over yet. A stop here would be nice, but that's going to end it. That's a touchdown. Texas A&M survives. And unfortunately, they're going to knock out Texas State. What a disappointing result that was for us. I mean, I think we can all agree we want the little schools to win. It is what it is. North Texas is playing next. And fortunately, they can't be eliminated because they're attacking. I also think they will be getting out soon. But they do have a chance to attack SMU here and take all of their land. Well, so far, the offense has not looked good. They've only scored seven points. They need a first down here. That was a good decision by the quarterback, but he's going to have to make a lot more of those good decisions if there's any chance for North Texas to survive. I mean, the good thing is they can't get knocked out, but it would be pretty cool to see them pull off the upset. They do need to get a stop here and they get it. So now they have the ball back with plenty of time to go down and tie it up. But the question will be if they're able to actually do that. This tight end is making moves though, and I think North Texas is going to have a shot at the win here. They're already in field goal range, so they might as well take a couple shots to the end zone. I'm not quite sure why they're running it. It's not working out, but settling for three with this much time yet would be their biggest mistake. That's what they're going to do though. Oh, and how nice of them to burn a timeout for SMU as well. I mean, they deserve to lose this game completely. They literally took a timeout for them. I don't understand that at all, but it is what it is, and... That's a completed pass to midfield. A lot of questionable decisions, but it is what it is. The SMU quarterback slung it deep, and what a catch! SMU is going to survive. I did not see that ending coming at all. I thought it was going to overtime. What on earth? I mean, this is the play of the game, obviously. They're going to show it again. Why would you have one guy back there with three guys on him? I mean, goodness, it is bold to assume he could take on three at once. And it turns out he couldn't. North Texas is still in it, though. But so is SMU, and they're playing again. I would love to see a rematch of that game. Let's see where the arrow is going. And it's going north. But technically, boys, if it's pointing this way, the closest team is SMU. So we're getting a rematch. And this really isn't fair for SMU. They have to try to stop their land from getting conquered twice in a row, and North Texas is fighting again, keeping it close through the first quarter and a half. All right, now with three minutes left in the third quarter, North Texas is up by five. It looks like they're about to go up by eight, and they really want to take over SMU's land. I honestly don't think they can pull it off, but on fourth and 25, they went with a long field goal and hit it, and instead of making it a one possession game, SMU is going for it. This is very ballsy, but it's going to pay off. And it wouldn't surprise me if North Texas blows this game in the end. It looks like they want to, but maybe not. They ran down the clock. They scored another touchdown. They're up by 10. SMU only has one timeout left, and this one is pretty much over. 
They're gonna take over all of this land unless some miracle happens. And now with 25 seconds left, they need to snap it. Come on, guys. You gotta move fast if you wanna somehow win. It is hard to beat a team twice in a row. That was such an unfortunate matchup for them and they're in trouble. I think it's over. North Texas takes down SMU, and boys, we finally have that upset team that we were looking for, that underdog to root for for the rest of the tournament. If your team's already out or if you root for a team that's not in Texas, I recommend going for North Texas. Well, we're down to just seven teams. It looks like North Texas is gonna get to play again, and they're in a great position. Getting to attack three times in a row is super lucky, and this time they're gonna be taking on Texas Tech. All right, well, it looks like the Mean Green aren't having any luck against the Red Raiders so far. I mean, 13 isn't a big difference, so maybe I shouldn't have said anything. They could very well score here, and the halfback is gonna get into the end zone, and you know what that means. We might have another upset here on the horizon. Stop him short. That's unfortunate. Patrick Mahomes would be very disappointed if Texas Tech went out early to North Texas, but it's a real possibility. Come on, guys. You've got to get a stop here. I mean, that is all it takes. Just one more stop to get the ball back on offense, and they get it. Time to see if they can step up when it matters on third and eight. I guess they couldn't. And the good thing is, it's not over yet. I mean, they can still get a stop. They do still have three timeouts, but I think they're just a little bit overmatched here. They can't stop Texas Tech now, and I think they're just going to run out the entire clock here. Maybe next time Austin Ani can pull it off, but I like the effort so far. They're playing well, and Texas Tech is now up, and hopefully they're not traveling right back to North Texas. That would be devastating. They're going south, and this one's going to be an extremely close call here. The arrow was kind of pointing like that. It almost hits Texas, but I think it's hitting UTSA, and I even put the arrow on here to prove it. And I have to say, UTSA has done a pretty good job on their own. Look at that broken tackle. He's going to go. And now that they're on the four yard line, I think they're going to get into the end zone here. Second and goal now. The lefty drops back and that's a touchdown. On Texas Tech's next drive, they got held to three. So the Roadrunner's fate really is in the hands of the offense. And they'd be smart to just settle for three here and not score a touchdown. He fumbled the ball. Are you serious? I mean, that was such a costly turnover. Texas Tech just worked it down the field. They burnt through the clock. And then they threw an interception instead of kicking a field goal. I don't think either of these teams want to win. I don't get it. UTSA trying to save their life and he just threw an interception. Why? I mean, that is back to back to back turnovers in a minute and a half. We're going to overtime and I bet the Red Raiders get held to three here. I don't know why. I just think UTSA is going to be able to pull it off. But who knows? Second and six. Wide open receiver in the end zone. That's a touchdown. Definitely not what the Roadrunners wanted, but at least they still have their chance to match it here in Wildcat. And on third and goal from the two, I'm expecting a run. It's going to tie it up, and they are doing everything they can to survive. Double overtime now. The pitch gets out, and they're going to score again. UTSA does not want to go out early. They just need to get a stop here, and it all comes down to fourth and four. Someone's probably open, but they get the interception. UTSA survives against Texas Tech, and our potential for an underdog story lives for another day. I'm pretty sure every team that's on the wheel has played in the game now. It looks like Texas Tech is getting the spin again, and I think we know what's coming. They're going to have to play against North Texas or UTSA again, and this one might be the one that knocks out the mean green. With about three minutes left, they were down by seven, but they're not out of it yet. They could still tie it up, and they might be able to pull it off still. Ostinani gets a wide open touchdown, and this is where it really matters. Can the defense get a stop on third and 14? They get an interception. I don't know how these small schools keep staying in these games. There's a chance they could win now, and the AI is actually being smart and running out the clock. What am I witnessing? Don't score! Oh, you hate to see it. I was calling the AI smart. They were actually draining the clock, but now they need a defensive stop, and if they somehow blow this game and get knocked out, it is all their fault. All they had to do was settle for a field goal there, but they scored, and now the Red Raiders have a shot at the end zone on the last play of the game. They throw it up, and it's knocked down. North Texas survives, and maybe Texas Tech just isn't that good. They didn't knock out two of the small schools there, and now we got TCU playing. What direction are they going in? It's going to be going down south, and you know that means TCU at Texas. Near the end of the first half, TCU is looking to take a lead here, and they get it. I don't know why, but I actually thought Texas would come out and dominate this one, but even in a video game, they just can't seem to play well. Though I will take my statement back if they do end up pulling this off. They've come back, and they actually won in the end. So no Nobody's getting eliminated today, but I want to see some drama. Come on, give me a good matchup here. TCU again. Let's get the rematch against Texas. That's what we want to see. 
and it might be, but I'd also say that is very close to hitting Texas Tech. All right, here's the arrow from the wheel. I really can't tell, man. I mean, I think I'm gonna have to go with them playing the Longhorns again. So it's time for TCU at Texas, part two. And this one's shaping up for a good ending. With two minutes left in the second quarter, Max Duggan takes it, and he's gonna get into the end zone, but I think Texas is gonna respond back here. Quinn Ewers, he gets in. No, he doesn't. Oh my gosh, all he had to do was fall forward, and now they're just settling for three, and that could cost them the game in the end, but they do have the ball here, and they're gonna get into the end zone. Well, the game's gonna be in Max Duggan's hands. Third and inches here, they do pick it up, and they have a minute 16 to get down the field, so they need to start moving quick. They do have two timeouts, and I think they're in a pretty good position now. Let's see what they do. That is a laser. Texas could be in shambles. I mean, they have their chance. There's 28 seconds left. They do have three timeouts. Xavier Worthy, what are you doing? He's breaking tackles now. I don't know what I was witnessing, but after a big passing play, they are moving down the field and they have a timeout left. What are they doing? Three, two, one. Call your timeout. I mean, that could have been game. Why didn't they just burn the timeout? They can't use it anyway. Hail Mary, trying to get the win. And it is knocked down. And TCU gets the pleasure of eliminating the Longhorns. They have all of this middle portion of Texas to themselves now. And with just six teams left, this really is anybody's game. North Texas is playing now. And this is their chance to really expand their land. They're going to be going to the north, which I don't even know what this could possibly point to. I'm going to spin it again. And this time, hopefully they're going to be going over to the west and they can get revenge on Tech. Never mind. This one's going to pin them against TCU. And this is a great chance for an upset win. All right, boys, here at the beginning of the fourth quarter, North Texas down by nine. They're not going to get this fourth and one, but they did get an interception. If they are going to somehow stay in this game, it would be now. That is a terrible play, but I guess all they wanted to do was settle for three here, make it a one possession game. And I can't believe I'm saying this but they have a chance all they have to do is get a stop come on no he's back in field goal range and he gets the first down i don't think there's too much they can do now even though they got him on third and 17 again max duggan breaks the sack and he slings it and that could have been a pick it wasn't though so it's gonna be a two possession game assuming this goes in and i don't think the upset is very likely boys north texas is somehow gonna have to score and now that they've burned one of their timeouts it's pretty much over unless they got an onside kick yeah, this is over, boys. It was a good effort, though, that's for sure. I mean, it just goes to show that anybody can win on any given day. UTSA is going to be playing next, and I'm not sure there's a good direction they can go here. They're surrounded by juggernauts, but that is probably the best angle they could go. That one would be closest to Houston if it's going out this way. Houston is on the coast, so we'll see what happens, but it looks like Houston has control of this game here at the end of it. I mean, UTSA isn't out of it yet, but they just need a lot to go right for them, and I'm afraid they're not going to be able to pull off the upset. That's a sack, and that just shows that the Cougars do not want to lose on their home field. They're going to go ahead and defend their territory, and I feel like we've had so many close endings recently. It was kind of a breath of fresh air not to have one there. I don't know. It was just something different. I was getting very close to these close endings, but poor Houston is going to have to defend again. You know, I'm starting to realize that Houston sports fans have it pretty tough. I mean, I guess besides in baseball, but they cheated there, so I don't really know how much that counts. They're not going to win this one most likely, but they are putting up a valiant effort to come back here. Fourth and three, they do get it, and they keep finding themselves on these third, fourth down situations. Hopefully they can score here, make the game interesting. That's a drop, and now it's fourth and five, where they thrive, but he is marked short. I guess them winning wasn't meant to be, and now there's only going to be five teams remaining on the map of Texas. Who is going to come out on top of this battle? At this point, attacking is very important. It looks like UTSA is going to get another chance. And honestly, this can't hurt them, so they might as well take advantage of it. They're going to be going north, and that clearly puts them against Texas A&M. I don't see how they could travel to Kyle Field and win. And it looks like defensively, they just haven't been able to stop Texas A&M. They've done decently on offense today, but I just don't think it's going to be enough to win this one. They're still down by 14, and they're going to need to score on this possession. It's third and 10. There is a wide open receiver. He holds on to it. And we might have a ball game, folks. It is third and four. Texas A&M has to pick up the first down and they get it. Never mind. He must have been marked short somehow because if you look here, after that run, somehow Frank Harris passes the ball twice. So I don't know what happened. I thought he was well over the line. His knee must have hit the ground or something. I really don't know how UTSA got that ball there. But now that I think about it, there wasn't a punt or anything. Did he fumble it somehow? Like what happened? I mean, they just scored, but I'm sitting here confused on how they got the ball back. I mean, it shows there's a fumble here, but I won't be able to see what actually happened until the end of the game. I mean, I think Texas a and still going to win. I think they're going to get into field goal range here. They have like 30 seconds. 
They have their timeouts, and there was only ever so much that UTSA could do unless they force another fumble here. I mean, give credit where credit's due. They came in and put up an amazing fight, but how they got that ball back there still looks kind of fishy. I have no clue how they did it. Here's the last play of the game. I'm going to assume it gets knocked down, and it does. All right, here it is. I'm going to go to the replay, and it says there's no replay available. I don't know why. There's just no translation of what could have possibly happened. I don't get it, but nobody got eliminated. By the way, boys, I went back and looked at the film. Still no clue what happened there, but UTSA just got drawn again. Hopefully, they don't have a rematch here, but unfortunately, I think they do. I think the arrow hits this corner before it goes into TCU, so we might have another crazy finish to sit through. UTSA is down by 10 with three minutes left here, and even though they scored that touchdown, I think Texas A&M is going to run out the clock this time. They're going to have a chance, but they're going to have to really send the house here if they want to get a stop. Third down, they actually passed, and it's incomplete. What on earth is Texas A&M doing? They just blew this whole game. I mean, granted, they probably do trust their defense, but with a minute left, that's a lot of time, and they're breaking away a huge run. UTSA, is this going to go to the house? Is the quarterback that fast? He gets caught, and he is going to spike the ball with like 48 seconds left for no reason. This tournament has had so many crazy finishes. If Texas A&M gets eliminated, I don't know what to say. I mean, they honestly just help their chances because if UTSA scores here, they have even less time now. That is a dot. Oh my gosh, UTSA might pull it off. The kickoff return didn't go far either. 22 seconds. They have to somehow get to midfield at least. And at least from there, they have a chance at a Hail Mary. But I'd assume they want to get in the field goal range. UTSA is going to have to play good defense here. You don't want to send too many. You're giving up a lot of yards very fast. Now they're in a little bit of trouble. 12 seconds left. That's enough time for two plays. They only really need about 10 yards. That should have been game. It would be something if they pulled this off. I don't know if they're going to be able to do it. That's a deep pass. And it's knocked down. Texas A&M didn't get in field goal range. They're going to have to go for the Hail Mary. And I don't even know if that's reaching the end zone, man. No way. Are you serious? They just survived off of that? Well, no upset here. I mean, that is an insane ending, but we want to see upsets. That is crazy. All right, the wheel better not give us UTSA at Texas A&M for round three. Come on. We do not need to give the Roadrunners a third crack at it. This one's going out west, and this time they're going to be taking on Texas Tech. I mean, I think UTSA has proven that they are here to stay. They're in a game with Texas Tech on the road, and I could very well see them pulling this one off. They're up by three now, three minutes left, third and five. Let's see what the Red Raiders do. They're taking a sack, and that puts them in a bad position because they have to punt. All right, boys, here we go. Third and five. If they get this, they're going to start trying to run out the clock. That is a deep throw, and he is gone to the end zone. I feel like I've become a Roadrunners fan just throughout the course of this entire video. I'm going to order a jersey if they somehow win this thing. It looks like Texas Tech is going to settle for three here and try to get a stop on defense. So this one is not over yet. Can't get too excited, and I have a hard time believing they pick up this run on third and nine. He's getting stopped, and Texas Tech has 34 seconds left if they want to survive. If they want a chance to still win it, that could be a pick. It's not. I mean, this entire game has just been kind of incredible. To see them come up big, nobody thought the Roadrunners could do it, but with 15 seconds left, it is looking more and more likely as the time ticks down. And this is why you all should always pick an underdog to root for, because if they somehow pull it off, it's amazing. They are going on to the final four, and they clearly have the most land on the map now. This is incredible. However, that also means they're very easy to attack. It's very easy to land on them. And if this arrow is going down south, we're going to have another big game it's going to go to the West, and two of the biggest schools left are going to have to face off. And if Texas A&M pulls this off, this really is anyone's tournament. All right, with about five minutes left, this one has been a close one all day. Texas A&M needs to score here, and getting seven would be huge, but at least they know they're going to guarantee a tie, so I guess they're happy with taking that. Well, it's third and six now, and Max Duggan's going to drop back and get sacked. The Aggies could really pull this off. They're going to have to go the distance, though. 90 yards down the field is tough, but somehow they just continue to slowly inch their way down. Don't take a sack here. I think I have to root for the Aggies here because TCU is the highest overall team by far that's left. But Haynes King just doesn't seem to want to win this one. That run's only getting him to midfield. And I think this one is probably going to go to overtime unless TCU doesn't get this, but they do. So I'm just going to assume they burn through the rest of the clock here, run it, send it to OT. And surprisingly enough, they're actually passing. I don't know what they're going for at this point. I mean, I thought they'd take a deep shot or two, see if you get in field goal range. But now time's ticking. They do take the deep shot and it's picked off. Imagine this gets returned for a touchdown. It doesn't. Okay, overtime. Well, it looks like the Aggies are going to score first, and TCU has to score. It is third and 13 already. They might be in a little bit of trouble. 
They're going to get it closer, but it's still fourth down. They're going five wide. Max Duggan drops back, and he delivers the laser. But they fumbled. No. No way that ball just came out. I mean, the refs aren't even reviewing it. That's just game. Texas A&M is moving on, and I thought he was down for sure here, but I guess he never touched the ground when he lost the ball. Well, it's really getting close to the end, boys. I mean, look at this. There's only three teams left, three different colors across the state, and honestly, I think any of these three teams could realistically win this. Texas A&M attacking is scary. They're going to have the advantage here. They're going to be going down south, and I can't wait to see what happens here. Well, with two minutes left, 28-28, UTSA has the ball, and they are driving down the field. I'm not sure who's going to come out on top, but this has been an incredible game. Both teams have played really well, and if the Roadrunners are smart here, they should just burn through the clock, but instead they snap it for no reason, and that should have been a pick. I'm really not quite sure what they were thinking there, but by the way this drive's gone for Texas A&M, I think they're still going to survive. There's been drops, there's been tons of wasted clock, and now there's only about 15 seconds left. That pass is going to be incomplete. UTSA is going to win, and that's huge. They're not getting eliminated. Now we're back on the wheel. Who's going to be attacking this time? It's going to be North Texas, and I'm pretty sure that this arrow is going to point towards Texas A&M, and it is. Obviously, that's going into the land that they claim from TCU, and can you imagine if the Mean Green won this one? It would be insane. I don't know what I'd think if they actually pulled this off. It looks like they're going to get onto the board first. That's a missed throw. I mean, come on. I shouldn't have even said anything there. I probably jinxed it. Austin Ani gets it done here, though. And with about four and a half minutes left in the game, it looks like North Texas has maintained that seven-point lead. I'm not sure how they're doing this, but an upset could be on the horizon here. Third and eight. It looks like they're going to get the stop, and I don't know how this game has gotten to this point. What is going on in Texas A&M? Well, it is third and six and this could be huge. If they pick it up, he's Mark Short, and instead of going for it on fourth and one, they're going for the field goal. It's good. So Texas A&M is in a lot of trouble. They need to score almost immediately. They burn two timeouts, and we are actually going to get a small school championship matchup, assuming the result holds. Well, boys, I was correct. It did, and Austin Ani really got it done at Kyle Field. Are these really the two final teams in the entire state of Texas? Well, we've made it to the final game, and this one's going to be for home field advantage. It's all UTSAs. I don't feel it's fair that only one team can potentially win in the championship, so I think it's best for at least the champion that either team can come out on top. That's right, boys. This is the last game of Texas college football imperialism, and near the end of the first half, it is not looking good for North Texas. They haven't scored a single point, and I think UTSA is at least going to get three here since the quarterback stumbled over, but the Mean Green need to get something going. Well, it's the fourth quarter, and they still have zero points. They finally have gotten into UTSA's red zone for the first time, but unless they have a miraculous comeback in them, I think this one's pretty much over. There's only so much you can do when you start out down 20 to zero, but technically they are not out of it yet. They are down two possessions, they have three timeouts, and that could have been it. I mean, the odds of them coming back are not likely, but we have seen crazy stuff all day, and there's a possibility. Let's see what they can do here. Will they get a touchdown? I guess not there, but it is now fourth and one. They're gonna run it, and that's a first down. They better go quick, or they could burn one of their precious timeouts that they need and then go for it on first and goal and almost throw an interception. There's been multiple times in this video where I'm not quite sure what North Texas's head coach is doing, but it is not over yet. They have to get the two-point conversion. Let's see what they do. Anyone open? It's in. All right, it all comes down to an onside kick. Are they going to recover it? Let's see. He runs up. He kicks it. And that's going to be UTSA ball. Well, 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 who would have thought of this? The Roadrunners have now taken over all of Texas it is a blue state, not expecting that, but UTSA wins it all. And if you all kill the like button on this one, I'll start working on the 126 team US map.